The digestive system breaks down food into nutrients needed for your body to work properly. Amino acids needed to build and repair your body and energy needed to do anything. The waste produced exits the body without ever going inside, but the inside of the body also produces waste and the excretory system removes the waste from the blood so that it can be expelled in the case of mammals as urine. You can think of the digestive system as a conveyor belt that processes food. The first step is entry into the mouth where the food is mechanically digested by teeth. Homodont teeth all look the same and are found in fish, amphibians, reptiles, and dolphins. They work well for eating insects or fish, but are not as effective at breaking down diverse foods. Mammals have heterodont teeth that have become more specialized like a Swiss army knife to handle multiple types of foods. Some animals have lost all their teeth, either because their diet is primarily tiny things like ants, as in the case for anteaters, or they needed to lose weight, as in the case for birds. These animals are called edentate. The mouth also houses three salivary glands that add enzymes to break down sugars in our food. This is chemical digestion. The food next drops into a long tube called the esophagus. The esophagus has muscles that squeeze the ball of undigested food, called the bolus, down to the stomach. This process of muscular movement is called peristalsis. Muscles that act as doors that prevent the bolus from moving to the next organ until ready are called sphincter muscles. The esophagus of birds is special because there are two extra organs that the bolus passes through. The crop is a holding tank for food and the gizzard is a muscle that replaces the teeth. Birds don't wanna spend a lot of time on the ground. So they swallow food quickly and it goes to the crop where it sits until the gizzard is ready to mechanically break the food down. Birds will eat small pebbles that get stuck in the gizzard and help crunch down hard foods. The third step in digestion occurs in the stomach, which is a large sac that mixes the bolus with digestive enzymes and acids. Mucus is produced as lining to prevent the acids from digesting the stomach itself. As you can see, there are many different enzymes that enter the digestive system at different points and digest different types of molecules. Sugars are digested by amylase, maltase, sucrase, and lactase. Proteins are broken down by pepsin in the stomach, trypsin in the small intestine, and pepsidase in the large intestine. Bile is a greenish yellow acid produced by the liver and stored in the gallbladder. People with liver damage end up with bile in their blood, which causes their skin to become yellow, a condition known as jaundice. The liver is considered an accessory organ to the digestive system, though it has many functions. Not only does it make bile, it regulates a ton of chemicals in the blood, including sugars, proteins, fats, vitamins, and toxins. It also recycles dead and dying red blood cells. The pancreas is another organ linked to the digestive system. It produces many of the enzymes I mentioned on the last slide, as well as some hormones like insulin. The stomach of most even-toed ungulates in the order Artiodactyla are broken into four chambers. We call animals with a four-chambered stomach ruminants, and they include all even-toed ungulates besides camels, pigs, hippos, and whales. The reason for the four chambers is that plants are really hard to digest compared to animals. The stomachs are vats of bacteria and enzymes that help break down the food. Ruminants chew their food multiple times, coughing up a bolus from the first stomach chamber to mechanically mix the enzymes and food. The regurgitated bolus is called the cud. A benefit to chewing your cud is that you can grab food quickly and digest it in an area safe from predators. Another is that you have a second chance to break down your food. I also want to point out the cecum in this diagram, which is a small blind sac that comes off the large intestine. It houses bacteria and is the final site of salt and water absorption before defecation. The small intestine is thinner than the large intestine, but much longer. This is where 90% of the absorption and digestion in your body occurs. When I say absorption, I mean that the bolus is still technically outside the body and the broken down nutrients need to get inside, enter blood vessels and travel to the rest of the body to be used. And this happens in the small intestine. If you have ever eaten tripe, which is common in Mexican and Cambodian soups, you have eaten intestines. Tripe has a very strange texture, like honeycomb. This is because the lumen, or opening of the intestines, are covered in tiny projections called villi that are made of cells which are covered in smaller projections called microvilli that greatly increase the surface area of the organ for maximal absorption. If you stretched out the surface area of your small intestines, it would actually reach 250 square meters, the size of a tennis court. The type of food an animal eats is correlated with the length of its intestines in relation to its body size. Herbivores need very long intestines to break down their food. Carnivores have relatively short small intestines. Omnivores are in between. 
our small intestine is about 22 feet long. Next, the bolus reaches the large intestine, which does some final digestion with bacteria and absorbs water that the body needs. The appendix provides good bacteria for the intestine. It can become infected, causing appendicitis, the treatment for which is to have your appendix removed. Some mammals, like horses and rabbits, digest food through a different means. Instead of absorbing nutrients in the small intestine, they do so in the large intestine. The benefit is that they don't need to have a heavy four-chambered stomach and that they have more efficient absorption of sugars, giving them more energy. These hindgut fermenters therefore move a lot faster, but there are several disadvantages. First of all, the large intestine is short, which means there is very little time to get all the nutrients out of the food. For this reason, these animals tend to practice coprophagy, which is a fancy way of saying they eat their own poop. This can be a problem because they get exposed to bacteria that were in their gut. Second, this system only works if the plants they're eating are high in nitrogen, so their diet is more restricted. Third, this is not a very good system for detoxifying plants, which further restricts their diet. Eventually, all food must exit the gut. The feces is composed of water, bacteria, and undigested food. The last chamber of the large intestine is called the rectum, and it remains closed by a sphincter muscle. In fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and monotremes, feces exits the body through an opening called the cloaca, which is the same exit hole for urine and gametes. In marsupial and placental mammals, there are two separate openings, an anus for feces and a urethral opening for urine and gametes. In females, the urethral opening is called the vagina. And now we have reached the end of the gut. It is time to review with a song. Where will I go? Where will I go? Where will I go? Where will I go? I don't know. Teeth biting me apart, saliva breaks me down, tongue pushing me around. Where am I? The mouse, the mouse, the mouse. Somebody can get hurt in there. It's a muscular tube where you swallow your food. Mucus helps me move. Where, where am I? Hey, what do you call that thing? Uh, Esophagus. I land in an organ sac. Digestive juices attack, mixing me into muck. Yuck. Where, where am I? Stomach. When you eat healthy food, nutrients are absorbed, moving through this tube. Dude, where, where am I? Small intestine. Why is it so long? Water is removed, making solid waste. You wouldn't like the taste. Where, where am I? Large intestine. Large intestine. Large intestine. The trip was very fun, now my job is done, it's the end of the run. Why, why am I? Rectum, 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 rectum. These songs are getting weird. The other system I will cover today goes by many names, the excretory, urinary, or renal system. Cells produce large amounts of two chemicals, salts and nitrogenous wastes that the body has an excess of and needs to get rid of. Cells must also maintain their pH, ion levels, and water levels. The ratio of these chemicals also influences blood pressure because thicker blood is harder to pump. So extra chemicals get sent out of the body of mammals as urine. Urine is mostly, urine is mostly a mix of urea and uric acid, two nitrogenous wastes, and ions or salts. The kidneys are organs that pull these waste products out of the blood to produce and excrete urine. Luckily, there are not too many songs about kidneys, but I still found one. We are not kidding, see, we are your kidneys. The upper abdominal is where we will be. The right and left kidneys do all sorts of cool things you'll see. Please pay close attention, this lesson is free. One fact about your kidneys is we filter all your blood so free. Through the nephrons, there's about one million in each kidney. The kidney shape just like a bean, it's about the size of the fist you see And its top is covered by your adrenal gland The adrenal gland's made of two parts, a cortex and the medulla These parts produce certain hormones your body needs The renal vein and artery are what bring blood to and from a sea They're attached to us right near where the ureters be Kidneys create hormones that tell the body to make more red blood cells They also regulate your liver Kidneys, the upper abdominal is where we will be. The right
Thanks for watching Kids Learning Tube. Please subscribe below and join us next week to learn more about everything. Animals can convert nitrogenous wastes into a variety of different forms, urea, uric acid, and ammonia. Most fishes produce ammonia because it is the easiest to produce. The problem for terrestrial animals is that ammonia uses up a lot of water and is fairly toxic to store in the body. So animals like mammals and amphibians that live on land conserve water by instead producing urea. The third possibility is to produce uric acid. This requires very little water, but a lot of energy. Animals that live in dry habitats like reptiles produce uric acid, as do birds, which don't want to weigh themselves down with water heavy urine. Let's end with some urine trivia. Two of these facts are false. Which ones?